Welcome to our review on controlling blood sugar. So first thing we need to know is where does this sugar come from? So whenever you eat food, then what happens is if there's any carbohydrates present, then it will release these simple sugars as it undergoes the process of digestion. And one of those very common sugars that we get is glucose. So once we've actually produced the glucose or the simple sugars during digestion, then what happens is it's going to move from your small intestine into the bloodstream. Now, obviously, that's going to lead to our blood glucose level increasing. Glucose is very useful to us because it's an energy store. And what we can then do is put that glucose through a series of chemical reactions, which will transfer the energy stored within the glucose molecules to ATP. What we do find, though, is that glucose can be problematic to us. If high glucose levels are maintained within our blood for a long period of time, then it can cause damage to systems like our nerves and blood vessels. So it's very important that we have mechanisms within our body to keep our blood glucose levels within a specific range. So a key part of our body that's involved in controlling blood sugar is the pancreas. So when your blood sugar levels are too high, the pancreas will detect that and it releases the hormone called insulin. Now, the target organ for insulin is the liver and the muscles. And what we find is that once insulin reaches the liver and the muscles, it triggers the conversion of glucose into glycogen for storage. So glucose changed into glycogen for storage in the liver and muscles as the result of insulin being present. It's not quite that simple, however. We do have insulin, which changes glucose into glycogen for storage. But we also need to then release glucose when our blood sugar levels are too low. So we use a second hormone called glucagon, which then converts glycogen into glucose. Just because scientists are really confusing, of course, they pick names that can very easily be mixed up. So you need to make sure that you know the two hormones, insulin and glucagon. You need to know that insulin converts glucose into glycogen and that glucagon converts glycogen into glucose. I'd suggest creating flashcards and then just testing yourself over and over again on those three key points. On the right, we've got a little diagram showing you what's actually going to happen to maintain that normal blood glucose level. So in the middle, you can see that is our normal glucose level. When you eat food, obviously the blood glucose level will rise. So the pancreas releases insulin that then travels to those target organs of the liver and the muscles. And as a result, glucose is converted into glycogen for storage. And that brings our blood glucose levels back to normal. If, however, you do something like exercise, then your blood glucose levels are going to fall. Your pancreas will then release the other hormone glucagon that will then travel to those target organs of the liver and the muscles where it's going to cause the conversion of glycogen into glucose, which is then back into the blood to bring your glucose levels back to normal. So we've discussed what happens when everything is working well in the body, but not everyone is lucky enough to have a perfectly functioning body. Sometimes people suffer with a condition called diabetes, and there are two types of diabetes we need to know about. First one, type one diabetes, this is where your body cannot produce insulin. So this is usually as a result of your immune system having destroyed those pancreatic cells that make the insulin. So you can't make the insulin, which means you can't control your blood glucose level. So in order to take care of this, people with type one diabetes will usually have to have insulin injections. They've also got to make sure that they maintain a balanced diet and they carry out regular exercise to keep their blood glucose levels at a normal level. One way you can usually identify type one is that it usually begins in childhood. Second type, type two diabetes. This is where your body can't effectively use insulin or you're not making enough insulin. So what we find is that the cells are not responding properly to insulin or you're not making enough of it to then bring those blood glucose levels back to where they should be. 
So the way we can control this one, first and foremost, eat a balanced diet and carry out regular exercise. We can also use drugs for this because we could give people drugs to stimulate the production of insulin or we could use the insulin injections once more. And usually type 2 diabetes is the one that occurs later in life and quite often is linked into obesity. So a favourite question that they like on the exam papers of the past was always looking at these two graphs here. Top one shows us the blood glucose level, bottom one shows us the insulin level. And they would ask you to describe or explain, or if you're on a higher tier paper, describe and explain what these graphs actually show. So this is where once more we're looking at both graphs and we need to talk first of all about the patterns that they show linking the two together and then if obviously it's got that explain part to the question you need to say why that happens using your scientific knowledge so if we just have a quick look at this we can see on the top graph first of all that's our glucose level so we can see it's actually relatively low initially and then at that point that someone eats breakfast the blood glucose level will increase then it decreases until lunchtime when we get that increase drops off again after lunch and then finally the increase at dinner time. So we've got that correlation between when they eat food and when the glucose level increases. And obviously you could explain that by talking about the fact that any carbohydrates in the diet would be broken down via digestion into glucose which is released into the bloodstream. But we also need to include the second graph about the insulin level. So we can see the two graphs are lined up and we can see that after that breakfast has been eaten, we get that spike in the insulin levels around the same time as that breakfast sees the spike in the glucose levels. So we can talk about the fact there that we get that correlation between increasing glucose levels and increasing insulin levels. And then once the insulin levels have increased, glucose levels come down. If we were to explain why, that goes back to the whole idea about the constant monitoring of our blood glucose level. The pancreas releases the insulin. Insulin goes to the target organs, which then triggers that conversion of glucose into glycogen for storage to bring the levels back to normal. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now explain why blood sugar levels change throughout the day. You can describe the role of insulin in maintaining blood glucose levels and you can describe those main differences between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. And you can also use information provided in a graph to then explain the changes and to also interpret what's happening there.